economics I or you have done the math I or even the chem I you probably have seen my videos um, so <clears throat> we have our I videos have been watched by you know well over a hundred thousand students all around the world for the IB students right so today I'm going to talk about the physics IA so for to make this IA video I've consulted with physics experts at our company HKXL and furthermore um, so in this video basically what I'm going to do is give you a very clear outline of how to ace the physics I very specific if you have watched our video before you will know our style no BS and we'll get straight to the point teach you exactly how to do it so we are very results oriented so let's start off by looking at the marketing scheme okay so um, basically three sections right the design okay so first you need to define a problem control the variable and describe a method for collection of data okay so first let us also for this section I'm going to teach you I'm going to basically give you an experiment that you could use okay but of course uh, don't uh, if, if you get caught for plagiarism, that's not our fault, okay, we don't recommend to copy this completely, but you can do something similar or a slight variation of it, okay? So the experiment I would suggest you to do, very simple, uh, as some, many students have got as level 7 doing this sort of exer experiment, it's just dropping a ball from a search at different heights and see how does it affect the bouncing time, okay? So that the problem, okay, so in the first step you just want to explain the problem, so basically uh, for physical, you, they always phrase the problem in terms of how does x affect y, right? So in this case, it's how does okay the height of dropping a ball affect the time it bounces? Okay, so just like that. Okay. The next part is, um, so you need to identify all the relevant variables, right? So the independent variable and the dependent variable. Okay, so for independent variable, basically it's, it's the height of dropping the ball, right? Okay, so in this, in this section, you also say something like, we will test out five different heights, which are, so maybe, 10 cm, 20 cm, 30 cm, 40 cm, and 50 cm. So you want to state the, the variables that you're testing. So you just say, we're, we're going to test the height of dropping the ball. We'll look at five different heights, which are 10, 20, 30, etc. Dependent variable is the time it bounces. Okay. So you can say something like, we'll use a stopwatch to measure this in seconds, right? So you want to talk slightly, just briefly about how you're going to measure it here. Okay, next part is very important, which is the controlled variable. So control variable is the things that you're you're going to keep constant when you do the experiment. Okay. So if you think about this case, how to, so the first the most obvious control variable would be uh, using the same ball, right? So actually, um, in the aspect two, you need to have a you need to design a method that control effectively control the control variables using the same ball. So in here, you want to be specific. So we're going to use a tennis ball, for example, for all the trials. Okay. So the second one is, of course, I think is the surface of table. So I think in here you can say we use the identical table for all trials, which will be a wooden table, something like that. So we, we're going to use the same table for the entire experiment. That's how we're going to control it, right? Um, so what else would affect it? For example, maybe the uh, wind, right? So we're going to we're going to like the um, the wind is going to be approximately the strength of wind is going to be slightly approximately the same for all trials. So how do we control this? We'll conduct the experiment in the same room, okay, for all the different trials, right? Okay. So next collection of data, okay. So it says you should develop a method that allows for the collection of relevant data. Okay, so uh, first you also need to talk about the apparatus and materials, right? So if we were to do this experiment, what kind of materials are needed? First you need a ball, a tennis ball, a wooden table, uh, and a timer, and a ruler, right? And a measuring stick. The measuring stick would allow us to measure the height at which we're dropping the ball at, right? So, 
four things, ball, table, measuring stick, and the watch, okay? So then the next step would be the um, method. So the steps basically just say use the measuring stick to measure um, to measure a height from the table that is approximately 10 centimeters. Place the ball beside the measuring stick to make sure it is 10 centimeters away from the table. Drop the ball and then start the timer once the ball is dropped. Okay, and um, and basically um, click stop on the timer when the ball stops bouncing. What is most important here is that it says develop a method. So I think what I just said is easy, but the more, more challenging part is develop a method that allows for the collection of sufficient data. Okay, what does it mean by sufficient data? So you need normally what we call is five by five. So what that means is we, you have to do five different variables. Like for example, we're testing the different heights here, right? So we need you need to have five different heights, okay? And you need to um, do it five times for every height, five trials and five different variables. So in the, at, at the back end of your procedure, you just say something like, we will repeat this steps one to five, for example, for five times to get the information for five trials, okay? And then the next step, you can say, repeat all the steps above for uh, different heights, like 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, okay? So first you say, you, we will repeat the trials, repeat the experiment for the same height for five times, and then we'll re repeat all those steps uh, for the five different heights, so you will get five by five, okay? So, um, this should be quite easy, right? So let us move straight to the um, to the data collection, okay? So the data collection, basically you need, you need, um, you just have a table like this, okay? So on, here you can have heights, right? So 10 cm, 20 cm, 30 cm, 40 cm, okay? And, and here you can have um, like the um, time, right? Time and then here you can have trial one, trial two, trial three, trial four. So this is a very, you know, messy table, but you get the idea, right? And here you have heights, different heights, and then you have time, and then this is for trial one, trial two, to try five, okay? So for the height, it's very important that you state the, um, state the, um, uh, how do you call that? Uncertainty, okay? So let's say you're measuring with a ruler. I assume you're measuring a ruler that is in millimeters, right? Millimeter increments, so 2 cm, 3 cm, okay? So you, you always, the, the plus or minus, I'm sure you know this, it's half of the smallest increment. So in here, the smallest increment is 0 0.1 cm, right? It's half of this, so it's plus or minus 0 0.05. Okay, and you need to make sure that these figures are have the same decimal place as the uncertainty. So for this, it will be 10.00, 20.00, right? Two decimal places, two decimal places. Make sure you have that in order to, um, in order to, um, get full marks, okay, because uncert if you don't have the correct uncertainties, you get marks taken off, okay? And then for time, let's say your timer is, let's say the timer is um, like, for example, 21.22 seconds, let's say it shows this, right? So it's gonna be plus or minus 0 0.001, like that, so I can put a zero here as well, okay? Um, so here you have different trials and then um, the time, okay? So uh, time, you want to put like plus or minus 0 0.01 seconds, for example, right? Half of the smallest increment or 0 0.05 seconds, okay? So let's say the timer shows 22.2 uh, seconds, then it will be, uh, the uncertainty will be plus or minus 0 0.05, right? So that you just put this added decimal here. Okay, so you put plus or minus here and then put your information. Make sure that the time matches the uncertainty, right? Okay. So, um, 
So that's about it for the data collection using the table like that. For data processing, okay. So for data processing, I think you need basically the first step you need to do is you want to find the average time it takes at different heights, right? So I have a suggestion to make a table like this. So on here you will put height. Okay, so different heights, and then here you put mean. So you want to find basically means the average. Okay, so here you're 10, 20, these are heights, 30, 40. Here you put mean, put the value here. Okay, and then um, make sure to put the uncertainty as well. The uncertainty as well. Okay, uh, but what happens when you calculate the mean? Basically, the uncertainty, because when you're counting the mean, basically you're adding up all the values and then dividing it by the total number of values. So the uncertainty would be should be added together. Okay, no, sorry, should no should not be added together, because you're dividing it by the number of trials. Okay, so put the uncertainty as well, and then just the same as uh, in the data collection, and then you also want to put the standard deviation. Okay, Cal find out the standard deviation, put it in this table. Okay, and then next you need to have a graph. So in the graph, basically you have here the time. Put, make sure to put your uncertainty plus or minus, and then um, uh, so here is the mean time. Okay, and then here you have the height. So maybe ten, twenty, and then plot the plot the different points, and then. Um, another thing is you want to put the error bars. What are the error bars? It's just the, it's basically the standard deviation. Okay, so the error bar should be um, um, just equal to one standard deviation. Okay, so uh, so this is it for the data collection and the data. Um, Processing. Okay, so make a table to show the mean and the standard deviation. Make a graph which also shows the error bar equaling to the standard deviation. Okay, make sure you don't miss out on the um, uncertainty. So for the graph, you put the uncertainty here, which is what I taught you just now. And then for the height, also put the uncertainty. Right. Okay. Good. Okay, so last part is basically the conclusion. So the conclusion, what they're looking for, in order to get, a, get two uh, full marks, you state a conclusion with justification based on reasonable interpretation of data. Okay, one more thing you should have in the data processing is the uh, R-squared value. Okay, to find the R-squared value, this shows what, how strong the uh, relationship is between two variables. Okay? Um, so. You, basically, the conclusion would be to say it's pretty obvious, right? Dropping a ball from a higher height is going to um, a large, is going to increase the time it bounces. So the just you need to interpret data, give justification. So you can say, as shown in the graph in the data process product processing section, there's a positive relationship between um, between. Uh, height and the time. And one more thing is that there is a high R squared value which demonstrate a strong positive correlation. Okay? And um, that's it. Okay. So, uh, then the next part is evaluating the procedures, right? In evaluating the procedure. So you need to act identify all the weaknesses. Okay, so what are some weaknesses of this? So I think the first one would be human error. So why is that? So we can say the stopwatch may be started at a different time than when the bomb drops. This is the first human error. The second human error is that the the um, the ball, because of the human movement, the ball may be dropped uh, at a different height than, um, than what it's supposed to be. Okay? <laughs> The second thing is that there's air, air resistance. I guess the air resistance actually reduce. What you can say is it reduces, it reduces the um, uh, potential energy. Okay, so what that means is that the this you can say this is a source of systematic error. Okay, it is going to increase the time that all balls bounces. Okay, second one, the third one is going to be. Um, 
Okay, the surface of the table, when the ball bounces, also loses its um, potential energy, okay, which is another source of um, systematic error. So this, basically what you can say is, this surf, the hard surface of the table is going to reduce uh, potential energy, which is, which is going to, which will cause us to underestimate the potential energy in all trials, right? And the, for as for the air resistance, you can also say it's going to be, we're going to underestimate the potential energy in all trials. Okay. So, uh, and then the lastly, the sources of improvement. So, just now we talked about the limitations. What are the limitations? First is human error. So, how do you el eliminate human error? It's by uh, doing more trials. So you can suggest we do more trials. With human error could be eliminated. To reduce air resistance, you can suggest using a vacuum in a vacuum environment, which is going to reduce or re completely eliminate the air resistance. Okay, and you can say in order to reduce the potential energy absorbed by the table, um, we can use an elastic surface, which is basically going to reduce the friction, which reduces the uh, potential energy. Okay, so this is going to get, give us a better sense of the real uh, potential energy that is there. Okay. If this is it for the IA. Uh, if you want sample IAs, basically all you need to do is click on the link below. You'll get some free physics sample IA. Okay. So um, hope that this helps. Okay. So see you guys next time.